As we start working compositions, sometimes we find ourselves either by accident or on purpose double clicking on layers. And when we do so, certain types of layers will do something unexpected. So let me close this window here and let's take a look at this composition. So I have this composition here and it's just a little uh, lower third demo for a, a new show. So now, if I double click on where's this News 5 logo, you'll notice that the icon shows me that this is a pre-composition. Basically, that little icon deter uh, shows me that this is in a an actual composition that is here somewhere on my project window, and there it is. So if I double click it, I will be opening that composition, uh, that composition's timeline and its composition window. You'll notice that now that basically they show my interface shows that particular composition. I can click back on the tab for the previous composition so that I can see where I was working at. And you can see now that this is, it has the two windows open in the composition window. Uh, that is something that happens quite often. Let me go ahead and close this composition. Now, sometimes we might double click on one of the layers. When we do so, we open up the layer window. Now the layer window, you'll notice that the interface doesn't change much from a composition window. The only thing that changes is that we now have a new set of tools or switches under this under the composition window itself, and the name of the tab says layer. So if you find yourself applying a filter or changing the transformation properties of a layer or changing uh, some kind of um, property within the actual timeline, and you don't see it reflected on your composition window, chances are that you are inside a layer. This happens quite often. So, you know, do not despair. All you really need to do is just simply close it. Now, the reason why we sometimes use the layer window is to make use of all these tools that we have in here. So we have, for those of you who have worked in video editing in the past, you will recognize these icons as in point, out point. And this is how we set the in point of a layer. So if I place my time marker somewhere, let's say here, and I want my endpoint for that video footage to start at that point where the time marker is, I can go ahead and press the endpoint, and you'll notice that my time for that video has been trimmed. Same applies to the out point. So if I place my time marker here and I click on the out point, that goes, there goes my out point to that position right there. So the endpoint and out point are one thing, one of the tools that we use within the uh, preview window uh, here in the layer window in order to do some of that uh, pre-production work. Once you have trimmed something, you can go ahead and if uh, uh, if you have it open from a layer within a composition, whatever changes you make here will apply to the actual timeline that you have from which you have opened the layer. However, sometimes we have we can get access to this layer window through the footage window. So if I double click the footage on my uh, project window, it opens up the same footage. Notice that the windows look very similar, except I don't have any of the other tools that I had on the on the layer window, these tools right here. And these are all for uh, what we call alpha work, which we will be working on when we talk about uh, masking and uh, key lighting and all kinds of other things that we're going to do to uh, remove items or colors from a piece of footage. So we'll revisit these. Now, you'll notice that when I look at both of those things, there's they're fairly similar. The difference being that the footage window up here, which I open by double clicking the actual footage from the project window, will apply to any instance of whatever, whenever I use that specific piece of footage. So if I were to trim this video here and I were to drop it in any con uh, at subsequent compositions, that change that I made to that layer, will, that, to that footage will apply to every layer that that particular footage creates in any timeline which is basically a way of doing pre-production work. Besides the in and out point setting uh, shortcuts, you also have the re uh, ripple insert and overlay inserts. So for those of you who have worked with video editing, this makes sense. If you have never done video editing, in short, a ripple insert will basically break whatever happens to be in the, in the timeline at the moment and it will automatically insert that other. So let me actually show you what it does. Let me put in my sit my in frame there and my out point around one second there. So that's the on, only piece of footage that I will be using. And when I do, based on where I place my time marker, if I place my time marker here, I can go ahead and uh, drop in by doing a ripple edit. You'll notice that basically it cut all the layers at that point, pushed 
the second half of it downstream and placed my footage right at the spot where the timeline where the, the time marker was let me undo that really quick and let's go and do the overlay with overlay basically it simply creates a new layer and places the footage on top of the stack so that's the difference between ripple edit and overlay overlay so the insert basically just cuts across all the layers and pushes everything downstream the the second half of whatever you cut and it places the actual footage that you're trying to import on top of everything so that is for that's the footage window that's something that you can do with the footage window going back to the uh let me close the footage window going back to the layer window if you find yourself in this situation all you got to do literally is just go ahead and just jump back you can close it if you want to and you don't affect your timeline your actual timeline now know that the time marker on the timeline and the time marker on the wind on the layer window are tied together so you'll notice that when I move it on the layer window it moves on the timeline even though I am not working on the actual composition window for that composition I am on, I'm working inside the layer the two remain together so I can control one from the other so just know that if you find yourself in this situation that's what that's what might be hap that is what might be happening so you might want to just simply close the layer window to come back to your composition window or click on the tab that says composition to open it up 